Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Sally's Hangout, episode 29. So, so excited, and I'm super, super excited because it's my first episode and hangout in LA. Yes, congratulations. Thanks, I've relocated uh, for some of my viewers who already know, but for the new folks that are just joining Sally's Hangout for the first time, I am here in Los Angeles, so it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific Time, so the, I'm adjusting to the time difference, so a little Sally Hangout update besides moving here. Today, I bought my bed. <laughs> I have somewhere to sleep as an actor, so that's important. I got a bed, I got my keys. Absolutely. I'm starting to put those things into place before I can... I can't go out on auditions until I get my myself situated. Got to get your rest. <laughs> right, got to get a good night's rest so I can yeah. go in there and do my best. So Absolutely. I'm so, so excited uh, to bring the show to you guys and keep you guys updated. Uh, a lot of folks out there have asked me, oh, when you move, are you still going to do Sally's Hangout? And I said, of course, this show and this community and bringing these episodes to you guys is very, very important to me. And I didn't want to, no matter where I go, Sally's Hangout will be with me and with with us, with all of us, because this is all of us. So I'm so excited to still be doing this with you all and to to have, <coughs> excuse me, I'm actually getting over a cold. That when I travel, I get sick. So, um, but I'm still here. So I want to just introduce you guys, my guest on the show tonight. I'm so excited. Uh, actor from NBC's Blacklist, Hashem. Tafik. Am I saying it correctly? Hisham Tafik. Hisham. Hisham. Yes. Hisham Tafik. That's the thing when we have difficult names, but then the great thing about it too is the fact that once someone gets it, they can never forget it because it's like you're not just a John or Bob. You're like very unique. <laughs> you're like super unique. Yes, thank you. So I want to um, introduce you guys and tell you a little bit about this man. He hails from Harlem World, New York. New York, I love it. It's my home. So he, he, he's a native New Yorker, which is very rare for actors, and he's an acting force to be reckoned with. If you guys haven't seen Blacklist, please, please make sure to put it on your demand, DVR, Amazon, whatever. However you can get it, get it, because it's an amazing show. Uh, he discovered his passion for the arts while performing a poem I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings um, by Maya Angelou in high school for his English class. And then he went on to study with the World Renowned Negro Ensemble Theater Company as well as the Susan Batson Studio, which a lot of us East Coast actors know very, very well. Uh, we love Susan Batson. And also a little fun fact about uh, Mr. Tafik is that he is a Marine in Desert Storm and was a correction officer and works for the FDNY. So he has multiple hats. There's a lot going on in his world and he's been on Law and Order, S for You, FX's Lights Out, and of course Nurse Jackie 30 Rock and Blacklist. So that's just a little bit about him and he's going to tell you guys more. So I'm so happy that you're with us. Thank How's you it for going having on the <laughs> How's it going on the East Coast this morning? You are on NBC's live, New York Live morning talk show with yes. Jackie Reed and got to talk about the show. So right away, before Sally's Hangout, you were already on television this morning. Uh, what was yeah. that like being live on the air? Well, that was, that was my first time. So I was a little nervous, but uh, they, they really went out their way to make me comfortable. And uh, after I got on set, it just... It ran, it ran pretty smooth. It ran pretty smooth. So I, there's a lot of actors out there who want to play these kinds of roles. I mean, uh, specifically on Blacklist, you play Dembe, which is uh, kind of like the main actor's confidant. You're like his intel, his security, his bodyguard. He really trusts you. But as a, a Marine, would you say, I mean... I'm not a Marine. <laughs> you know, I've never been a Marine, and I think for actors who want to act that don't have that experience, you know, how do they tap into that role? Because, of course, you have the, the natural life experience to bring to that role, and that really, really helps you. So how would you say, what advice would you give to actors who don't have that experience, and then also what does that do for you who has the experience? 
Um, wow. Well, the, the advice I would give to actors, um, especially when it comes to like understanding the military and, and, and the whole psyche of a, of a, uh, a serviceman, a Marine, Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever branch of service, I think you really have to hang out with someone who is in the forces. I mean, I mean, go to lunch, go to the movies. I mean, spend a couple of days with them, and you'll just see that there's a whole different type of um, thinking, awareness, um, just you know how how they carry themselves in public. Because when you when you go to boot camp, no matter what, no matter where you come from, there's a brainwashing that happens when you go to boot camp, and they kind of just like strip everything away from you. And then they kind of rebuild you physically, mentally, psychologically. And once that happens, it's very hard to go out, even whether you stay in the service 20 years, 10 years, 5 years. When you go out, it's very hard to erase that. So you wind up kind of carrying that with you for the rest of your life. So the best advice I would get, give is to really get with someone who has that knowledge, that experience, and just spend some time with them and just just notice everything they do. And, and you'll start to see that there's a difference between someone who served in the Marines and someone who served in the Navy or a Navy SEAL or Air Force. And you'll get to see all the different nuances and, and you can kind of incorporate that into your character. I mean, for me, um, it's kind of a blessing that I, I was able to do that and all of the other jobs I've done. and. At the time, I was like, what the heck am I doing? Why did I do this? But now as an actor, I'm like, oh, man, thank God I did do it. Because now it's just, it's second nature, a lot of the things. A lot of the roles when they call on me to do something as far as military, a cop, the guard, bodyguard, all of those things, it's it's second nature. I already know what the thinking of, of, uh, of someone who has that responsibility. It's, I automatically know what to draw from. So it's... It's a, it's a blessing for me, but if you don't have it, I would strongly suggest that you go out and really spend some time with someone who's already uh, had that experience. It's so great that you say that because I know a lot of actors out there who focus so much on acting, and we've talked about it before on Sully's Hangout, but don't necessarily really focus on living their life and having a well-rounded life and having all these other experiences. and you just mentioned that, like the, the blessing in disguise of who would have thought that when you joined and penned to join the armed forces, that that would later serve you for a greater purpose when you decided to become an actor. So, yeah. you know, that's why I tell folks, you know, take a new class, you know, take archery, take cooking classes, you know, go out there and snowboard, which I know is something you like to do, you know, <laughs> just try all kinds of things because it's going to serve you when you put on your resume those special skills that yeah. is going to set you apart from all the other talented people in the room i mean zoe zaldana had to take archery classes just to be an avatar so tell me about that exactly like that that process that transition like okay you you joined the marines how long did you serve and and then when well, did you decide to become an actor how did that happen well I'll try to make it quick, but <laughs> originally, originally, I had a dream of going to the NFL. So I played football in high school, and I kept getting injured. I broke my thumb one year, and then I think my senior year, I collapsed my lung, broke some ribs. Wow. So I was out my senior year, and I, uh, I had some letters. I think uh, Cornell, Hampton, um, some smaller colleges in Atlanta I could have went to on scholarship. But I was injured at the time, and I remember walking past a dance studio uh, in my high school, and they had a poster on the door so you couldn't look in the window and see the girls dancing. And on the poster was Herschel Walker in tights and a ballerina outfit dancing with a girl. And I didn't know at the time that Herschel Walker, who was a major football running back, was also a ballerina, and he did that to help him with his balance as a running back. Mm -hmm. So my friends dared me. They were like, I dare you to take a dance class. And I couldn't play football, and I saw Herschel Walker, and he was hot diesel and everything. I was like, Herschel Walker could do dance? I could do dance. 
So as a dare, I went and took a dance class and I fell in love with dance. Um, so I started dancing my whole senior year in high school. Um, never went back to play football, but I still couldn't because of the injury. And at the end of my senior year, I had a choice. I would go to France with my dance company or go to summer school at Hampton and play football. Um, and at the same time in my senior year, my father passed away. So I didn't have, I'm sure if he was alive, he would have been like, boy, you're going to summer school and you're going to college. But right. I was like, I'm going to France, you know, coming from Harlem, not really getting an opportunity to travel. I was like, I'm going to France. So I went to France. Wow. When I came back from France, um, the opportunity to go to college wasn't available anymore. So I started working like all these odd jobs, Yankee Stadium, Athletes Foot, you know, partying, hanging out. And then it wasn't well thought out. You know, I just woke up one morning and I knew my life wasn't going in the right direction. I was getting into too much trouble. And I was like, you know what? I'm joining the Marines. And it was just like that. I went, signed up. Next day, I was gone. Um, so I spent, I, I originally started up as a reserve for four years in Marines. But as soon as I joined, that's when Desert Storm happened. So I wound up getting activated and I did about a year and a half active duty. They sent me to Kuwait um, and I did all of that. Then when I came back, um, I took all the civil service exams. I took the cops test, I took uh, sanitation, I took the fire, I took corrections. And I also enrolled in BMCC, uh, Community College in Manhattan. And at the same time, I went back to my dance company and started dancing again. Um, and then I hooked up with uh, Gloria Gaynor, and I toured all over Brazil with her dancing. And I Whoa, kind of uh, started living, you know, just doing the dancing and the side jobs. And then uh, corrections called me. So I, I went to, uh, I became a correction officer, and I did that for about a year and a half. And I didn't like it. It was, you know, so too many brothers from the neighborhood locked up, too many friends, enemies. It was just a depressing job. But, you know, I had to do it to make ends meet. And then the fire department called me, and I left corrections, joined the fire department. But like I said, I was still dancing this whole time. And I did a show about Shaka Zulu, who was this great African warrior, this Zulu warrior. And we did a, a production of it, and it had a lot of theater in it. And, and I was like, wow, you know, I like dancing, but then I was introduced to theater. And I was like, you know, I'm already on the stage dancing. Why don't I try being on the stage acting? So um, I remember hearing on the radio that Spike Lee was looking for young African-American males between the ages of, like, 15 to 17 they had to have ball heads. So I was like, I'm going. I didn't have a headshot or anything. So I go to this auditorium in Manhattan, and there's like hundreds of dark-skinned brothers with ball heads, you know, for this one role. And I'm like, you know, okay, I'm going to try this out. And they pick me out of the crowd, and I go up, and I, you know, went through this interview. Um, but I think I was too old for the role at that time. I think I was like 19 going on 20. So they gave and me what, an extra role. What film? What film was it for? Um, oh God, what was Spike Lee's? Uh, oh man, one of his first films. It was. It's what Mackay Pfeiffer did to get on the map, because originally Mackay Pfeiffer got chosen for the role. Um, oh man, the name is slipping me right now. Because I see you got the more better blues. Clockers. You got the more better. That's the name it of the film. Lost. Clockers. Clockers. Oh, Clockers. Yes, yes. Clockers. So no, I got I was going to ask because I saw you have Mo' Better Blues oh, in the background. That's, 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 that's my favorite movie right there. Yeah. That's one of my favorite movies right there. So after I did Clockers, I had like an extra role, and I got the bug, and that's when I went and joined um, NEC, New Girl Ensemble Theater Company. And I took like an extensive uh, – acting workshop with them. Denzel Washington came to the graduation, you know, because he also was part of that theater company. Mm -hmm. And then it just snowballed from there. I kind of stopped dancing and I started to do more acting. And it just, uh, you know, bounced around from teachers to teachers and, and just kept doing the work. So Spike Lee gave you your first theater, well, acting job. Yeah, that was my first uh, 
my first role, I, I play like this drug dealer. At the beginning of the movie, you'll see me laying on the ground shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing about being an extra, I know, like, a lot of folks, after a while, you know, they don't really like doing the extra work. But at the beginning, I mean, it's 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 a blessing in disguise as well because it's like you really get to learn a lot about the business as an extra. You see what the process is like, especially if you've never done film and television before. I know for me, being a theater stage actress all my life, when mm. I decided to start the transition, you know, being on set was great just to see the difference and everyone talks really low yeah. and low. You know, everyone's not really loud and big and just like simple things that, you know, I mean, for some folks it's second nature, but for those who don't know, we just don't know. So it's yeah. great to just be in the environment and, and you, you're not on your feet all the time. There's a lot of waiting around when you're doing, uh, when you're on set. You got to pay your dues. Yeah, definitely. Earn your stripes, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Someone from the military can uh, definitely appreciate that. So you started this journey. You took some classes. You've been acting. But for most of us, you know, pounding the pavement, finding the joy in that process, what is that like for you? I mean, like you said, you've always, even with your dancing, like you were dancing, but you were juggling all these other major jobs. And even till this day, you're on a hit show, NBC's Blacklist. We all love it. But you're still part of the fire department, like, which is awesome. But how do you juggle that? How do you do that? And how does the FDNY feel? Do they watch the show? Are they supportive? What are their reactions? Well, I mean, I would say it started early on. I think, um, you know, my mother passed when I was four, and then my father passed when I was 17, and I was the oldest brother of five. So really, my senior year in high school, I was put in a position where I had to have my own money, you know what I mean? And at certain times, I had to take care of my brothers. Um, and there, there was really no one I could call on Hey, let me borrow your car. Let me borrow your money. So from early on, I knew I always had to have a job. Um, and I do have a, I like nice things too. So, I mean, I knew I needed to have a good paying job. Mm -hmm. So I, I always knew I had it to survive, but at the same time, I wasn't going to give up my dreams and my goals and my passions. And I just, you know, I found a way in every job, whether it was the Marines, whether it was corrections, and now it's the fire department, I found a way to make it work. So in all of those jobs, you have, vaca you have a certain amount of vacation time. You have a certain amount of personal days you can use. So what I did is I was always, I remember I was a correction officer when I went on tour with Gloria Gaynor, and I just exhausted my vacation to go on that tour. And then when I got in the fire department, and one of the reasons I transferred to the fire department is because when I did my research before I took the test, I knew firefighters only worked like two days a week, you know. And so it gave you that flexibility. You, you go 24 hours and then you have three days off, do another 24 hours, you have four days off. And then they also have six weeks paid vacation. So, I mean, I did all that research early. So when the fire department called me, I was like, bye-bye, corrections. It wasn't even a second thought. I yes. knew that was going to give me the flexibility to do all of my other passions. So now what I do is I always hold my vacation until the end of the year. And usually I wait and if I get a project, then I use my six weeks for that project. And usually with regional theater, like I've done, I've traveled to Little Rock, I did Raising in the Sun out there. I've done other productions all over the country. And, I, and usually those productions are six weeks. So I use my vacation to do those productions. Now, when it comes to doing stuff like Law and Order and all of those shows, usually it's a two or three day commitment. So I'm not working five days a week. So it's easy to juggle that. This is the blacklist has probably been the hardest test because we've been shooting. We started shooting in August and we're still shooting now. So I used up my six weeks in August just to commit to the show. Then starting in September, I can tell you it's been kind of crazy because it's like I'm waiting for them to give me my schedule. And then once they give it to me, I'm looking at my work schedule and I'm flipping it around and trying to make it work. And then when I'm at work, I'm scared they're going to call me. And 
So this has been kind of stressful and it's almost kind of taken away from really kind of enjoying the moment because I'm always worried about work, but I'm able to do it. And God has really blessed me to be able to do it. And I'm going to continue to do it until, um, you know, I can't, you know, I, I, I have a, a home I have to maintain. I have a, a teenager who's in private school. You know, those bills, bills have to be paid. So it, I can't just, you know, hey, I'm going to skip out to right. you know, and just, you know, work this job. And, I you know, I've always needed a job with benefits that paid me well because I have responsibilities to take care of. And I, and I say if you really want it, then you'll, you'll find a way to make it work. You really find a way to make it work. Of course, there's some sacrifices. Like I remember early on, everybody was like, you should go to L.A. or you should do this. So we're all going here for a week. And I'm like, I got a job. I can't really do that. I can't just get up and go to L.A. You know, it, it takes some planning. But in the long run, it's, it's actually paid off. And it's getting to a point where now I'm going to have a pension for the rest of my life. And at the same time, my acting career has taken off. And it's it's been a blessing, man. I mean, it was hard. But like I said, long term, it, it paid off. That's awesome. That's so, so amazing. And you said something. You just dropped the gem. Like, I had to tweet it. And I'll definitely say it again to folks. Uh, if you really want it, you'll make it work. That is just. It's so simple yet so difficult for so many of us to do sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just one of those things, you know, like there are responsibilities and as you get older, you know, the luxury that young people have that discover wanting to be an actor at a young age is that they don't have as many responsibilities, you know, they're, they're just in school and, you know, God bless those young people who find it young, but mm -hmm. us who find it in our adult age, like you said, rent still has to get paid. We before we're in the union, we still need health insurance to make sure. Now the government's saying it's mandatory to have health insurance. We have to figure out how to do all that. You know, uh, things are getting tougher and tougher, which is really um, putting to the test and yeah. separating those who want it for the wrong reasons who want it for the right reasons because like you said when you really really want something you will really make it work and you've been making it work for you and every actor uh, will come to a point in their career where they do have to make that decision of you know and when to leave the job when to leave you know or to leave the career or take a break from the career depending on where they are in their lives. Some women take a break to have a family. You know, everyone has a different transition, but mm -hmm. definitely we all have to make those tough choices. And your show is definitely blowing up and, and gaining that snowball momentum. Like you said, I mean, it just um, premiered in September, but I mean, even like the ladies from Orange is the New Black, like they, their lives have completely changed from yeah. like day to night once the, the show really hit. So, what is life for you like now? Like the day in the life before Blacklist and the day in the life after Blacklist? It hasn't really changed. I mean, it hasn't really changed. I mean, like I, the only thing that's changed is I don't have as much freedom as I used to have. You know, if I'm not at the firehouse working, then I'm on the set. There, there rarely are there any days where I, I'm just chilling at my house and, you know, so I just don't have freedom. Like today is the first day I think I cleaned up my house in like a month because stuff is just piling up long because I just running from one thing to the next, one thing to the next. So other than that, there has been no like major change in my life. I mean, the guys in my firehouse, they know I've been doing this for like the last 10 years. Um, they're very supportive of it. So, I mean, they tease me every once in a while. But like I said, that's been going on for a long time. So, and it's not like I don't think I'm this major star where people are recognizing me. And, you know, I'll get one or two people here in the gym or something like that. But there hasn't been, like, this major change yet that, like, has made me, like, overhaul my life where I needed to, like, overhaul my life. I'm still doing the same the same thing. One day I'm at the firehouse, one day I'm on the set. One day I'm at the firehouse, next day I'm on the set. So it's 
it's uh, it's the same thing, just not just not a lot of freedom anymore. I mean, it's one of one of the sacrifices we all claim we want to be really successful in this business, and we look at celebrities or stars and and kind of wish to be in their shoes. But I always tell folks, be careful what you wish for, because you don't really know how that garden is on the other side of the fence. And, and then it's not until you open the door and walk into that garden that then you know what it feels like. So you may want something, but a lot of my actor friends tell me, Sally, enjoy your freedom, you know, because there'll come a time where your schedule will be so busy and you're literally going from one thing to the next. Yes. That, that time that you do have off, cherish it, spend time with family, go on vacations, do all that. Don't feel like you're missing out on your career because, like we said at the top of the show, it feeds your actor. All of what you do feeds your Absolutely. actor. And being a real-life person helps you play a real-life person. Yes. <laughs> so it all kind of plays into it. But um, if you're just joining us on Sully's Hangout or you've been joining us and have a question or want to be part of the conversation and make a comment, be sure to hit us on the Google Plus page or tweet us at Sully Hangout. It's right under there. And we do have someone who's joining us and hanging with us. So I want to just shout out a couple people. We have um, Operation Red from Blacklist. Her name is Monica. She says she loves you and she loves the show. So thanks, Monica, for hanging with us here on Sully's Hangout. And uh, former Sully's Hangout guest, Arlene, she's, a for she's an actress as well. She's hanging with us. And my cheer sister from Virginia, Angela, is hanging with us too. So... Those are some folks who are on the live Twitter chat, so thanks for chatting with us. And, of course, if you've just checked into the show and you're a little late, no worries. Uh, after the show is over, you can catch it from the beginning on the YouTube page, youtube.com backslash Sally Hangout. So you can uh, go back and listen to the gems that have been shared here on the Hangout. And uh, I just want to ask you, like, you know, it was a funny thing. When I got here to L.A., I, I got picked up by some wonderful acting friends of mine, and one of the first things we've talked about, that as we're on the grind and we're starting, and, you know, you'll have a role here, and you'll book a show, and you'll have some lines, and your friends see it, and automatically people start making phone calls, asking to borrow some money, <laughs> you know, because people kind of assume that if you're on television, you're rich and famous. Well, that's a misconception because we're working actors and have to pay our bills just like everyone else. So what's that been like for you? Have you got any of those calls yet? People think you're rich. <laughs> um, well, it's not so much that people think you're rich, but it's like people think you have this power to hook them up or make a phone call, and I'm like, dude, I'm just this regular actor on the show. I mean, I, I really don't have any power. So I haven't really, I mean, my son, he thinks I'm rich, whether I'm on a show or not. But I haven't, for the most part, it's just been a lot of people thinking I have this power that I do not have. <laughs> I mean, that's that's really it. Nobody really hit me up for money or or anything like that yet. But you know, some people have like just you know asked me to like do stuff for them as far as the show, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't have that power. Yeah, the real power players are the producers. So if you want things to happen for you, you need to make some <laughs> film and TV producer friends because they yes. kind of. They really call the shots, and, and that's Absolutely. when you get to learn the business and you and you learn those things, that's something you'll really find that, like, if mm -hmm. even the, the director could love you, the casting director could love you, uh, you could have great chemistry on a, on a read with one of the actors, but ultimately the producers make the final call, you know. They're mm -hmm. the ones who are putting the money in the project, they're the ones who have their investment in it, and they want to see their investment returned. So they have a big say on who their options are for that. So that's that's something to kind of like take into consideration. Yes, but we do have a question out there for you. Um, I want to give a shout out to my friends over at Orange Is the New Black Beyond, great supporters. 
on Sally's Hangout, and they want to know what can we expect when the show returns next week, which I'm probably sure you can't talk about. But um, they also want to know what it's like working with James Spade and Megan. Well, James Spader is amazing. Um, I mean, as a person and an actor, I mean, um, I, what I've been doing is I've been studying him. It's like a master acting class. I'm very it's like a class. I was going to ask you that because he, he just has so much finesse and he just comes across like, I mean, just to be in the same room with him should must be <laughs> just... Yes, ugly. I mean, he's very detailed, very specific. Um, there's a choice for everything. I mean, he puts a lot of work into what he does, and, and that's one thing I've learned. And, you know, even in acting class, they always talk about, you know, being specific, specificity, you know, details. Um, and he is a master at that. So... And then just as a human being, as in a person, I mean, someone of his caliber, I mean, I've been on sets with people who don't speak to you, don't eat with you, don't ask you how you're doing, how's your day, are you having a good time? And he goes out his way to do all of that. Um, so just as a, as a human being, he is amazing, 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 amazing. Megan Boone is a sweetheart. I mean, she's a darling. Um, I remember the first day on set just how, you know, happy she was, you know, it was almost like a dream come true for her. So, um, and she's taking on a heavy load on her shoulders too. You know, I, I watch both of them and I see how they get all of this dialogue the night before or, or two days before and how changes are thrown at them. And it's like, nobody wants to hear any excuses. The camera's on, go through your trailer. We give you 20 minutes, come back out and you got to be on. Um, right. and, a lot of, and, and I look at that, and I'm like, a lot of us ask for that, but are you really ready for that? Are you, I mean, that's, it's like, and it, it, it's, it's impressive. So my job right now is I'm learning, I'm watching, I'm sucking it all in, and um, I'm going to do my best to take on all of those good habits, incorporate them with the things that I already do to make myself a better actor. But they're two, two wonderful actors, two wonderful people, and it's been an absolute joy to work with them. That's so awesome to hear. Because, you know, I mean, the most disappointing thing as a fellow artist is when you get to be on set or you get to meet artists that you really respect and, and love and have admiration for, and then their attitudes just suck. You know, it's... <laughs> I had that experience before, you know, I met someone who, I usually don't get starstruck, but there's just a few people that I just really, really, when I see them, it just means a lot to me, and and uh, I had asked them for a picture, and they gave me this, this sigh, like it was annoying, and, and I get it, you know, like, people sometimes just want to be themselves, but I don't know, I mean, I'm not on that level yet, so I'm in no place to judge anyone, but I... I just feel like if it wasn't for fans and for people who support you, you wouldn't be on the level that you are. So mm -hmm. you should be grateful for any opportunity that someone approaches you. But again, I'm not in a position where someone's asking me for a picture or an autograph every two minutes, so I don't yeah. know what that's like. But it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely comforting to know that you can be in that space, in a space where everyone is has that humility and, and people... Cause Ultimately, it's about human-to-human -human contact, and I feel like it's all about just loving one another and treating each other, you know, treating thy neighbor the way you would like to be treated. And so being on set with people who are so giving and gracious, that's always a blessing. <laughs> always, always a blessing. But I'm so, so excited for you. I mean, this is just awesome. Like, um, just a little side note, the uh, founder of Casting Actors of Color, Jamil Megan, you know, love him. He's a great supporter of Sally's Hangout, and uh, I know a good friend of yours, so that's kind of how, like, I've been following you, and you're part of the Casting Actors of Color community, and it's just, I have a special place in my heart for folks from our little niche in our community who I see are making it. That's just so special to me, and people from New York, I have, <laughs> you know, I'm a little biased to my New Yorkers, so I'm just so thrilled for you, and although we don't know each other that well, 
I just want to know, I want you to know that I support you and that I admire you and I have a lot of respect for you and that I just wish you nothing but the best because Thank you. seeing you triumph, it, it just gives hope for us, you know, who are doing this too and are every day trying to get it as well. So I just want to thank you for just being you, you know, being mm -hmm. gracious because Again, you your humility is just so awesome. I remember when I first asked you to come on the show, you were just like, "Oh, well, yeah, duh, like I'll totally do it." And and you know, some people, you know, they get on a certain level and things change. And you're just the same great guy who's so approachable, and that's awesome. I think that's I think that's one of the good things about um, like my having a day job, like and being a firefighter, like. It's so funny how one day I'm on a set, I'm in a trailer, people are running around making sure you're comfortable getting whatever you want. And then the next day, I'm on a fire truck doing something that nobody really cares. Nobody, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really helping other people. So I see two sides of the coin, and I think that also helps me, like, stay grounded and, and, and you know, and even before that, I, I don't think it's it's just not me to, but I mean, it's easily to get caught in that trap of, okay, because they treat you like that and all of a sudden you just start acting like this diva or whatever, but um, it's a trap you can easily fall into and I think you really have to know yourself so that you don't, but, and I think that's why it's good that even if, I don't care what type of actor you are, do some other things, whether it's community service, whether it's a hobby, whatever it is, do something that removes you totally from the acting world so you don't just get caught in that bubble and think that, that that's life because it isn't. It's make-believe. And I think um, the fire department and snowboarding and all of those things, it, it keeps me like, okay, that's play and this is real and both of them together makes life amazing but there, there has to be a balance definitely I mean a balanced life I always feel is the best life too much of anything isn't good for you and I know you have a you mentioned a wonderful teenage son uh, does, <laughs> so uh, acting uh -huh. FDNY and then fatherhood, <laughs> you know, which yeah. is all, it's a full-time job in itself, too, especially raising uh, young boys, and there's a, young black men in this country, and there's a lot that's been going on around, you know, the whole idea of the young black man and the, the black body and the fear of the black man, and uh, one of the actors from Grey's Anatomy recently was talking about the Michael Dunn case, and what happened to the young man in Florida and, you know, George Zimmerman and Trayvon, like, there's just all these things that are happening and a lot of actors that are, that are speaking out. Um, and I feel like the time has come again and it's come around, you know, during the 60s there was this era where artists were so much a part of civil action, were so much a part of civil justice. They kind of came hand in hand as an artist and that baton has kind of been dropped. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this new age has given the opportunity for that baton to be, you know, kind of picked up again. And we talked about that on a previous episode on art and activism because uh, there's some other artists that are, are doing some really great stuff about that. But for you as an actor, I mean, does, does your son watch your work? What does he think about your work? And, and, and kind of how do you, how do you, what kind of, how does that all come together for you for giving advice to your son and raising your son in this kind of, new age that we live in. It's it's funny. Well, that's a lot. Well, yeah, first, it is. <laughs> I, I unloaded a lot on you. <laughs> well, well, first, when I was dancing, my, my so I raised my son. My son was young when I was dancing. So the funny thing is, when I stopped dancing, he started dancing. So he really got into the hip-hop and the break-in. He didn't want to take modern or ballet or anything like that. But he really fell in love with dancing. Um, so I used to, actually, I took him to one audition with me, and he actually got a role as my son in a, a, a documentary at the African Burial Ground down in Lower Manhattan. So when you go to the African Burial Ground, they, they show this opening film, and he uh, plays my son, and I played his slave, and we're burying uh, some of the people, reenacting some of the slaves that were buried down there. 
But other than that, he really is not interested in seeing my work <laughs> on TV or film. I remember I had a film in Urban World one year, and I took him with me to the screening, and all he wanted to, this is when he was into skateboarding, all he wanted to do was know when we were leaving to go to the skate park. Like, he did not care about the movie. He didn't care about the Q&A. It was like skate park. So hurt my feelings at first. about keeping you grounded and yes, not but, in the world to make believe. Your son kind of reminds you, well, this isn't that important to me. Exactly. I, I, it's not. So I've come to accept that that's just something he's not really interested in. So um, he still supports me, still loves me. Like today when I had the TV show, he sent me a little text message saying, hey, I'm, I love you. I'm supporting you. I'm, I'm watching you. So... That was like the first time he's actually watched something. I don't think he's watched one episode of The Blacklist. So, but that's, you know, that's not his interest. So it's cool. Um, as far as the activism, I mean, I have conversations with my son all the time. I mean, with the Trayvon Martin case and now this case and, and just in general, because now he's 15 and he's not a baby. It's not cute anymore. He's dressing differently. He now has the freedom to hang out with friends. So um, I gave him this long talk when he was 13. On his 13th birthday, I had a long conversation with him about his transition into becoming a young man and the responsibilities now and the freedom he's going to get. And there's no more excuses of I didn't know or, or, or they made me do it. You know, 14, 15 you know how you're going to be judged in this society or in a court of law now. It's not, oh, slap on the wrist. I mean, some guys are getting charged as adults. Mm -hmm. So um, every day I'm reminding him about, about that. And it's scary, you know, and, I, and sometimes I try to have faith and trust that he's, he, uh, he'll make the right choices based on how I've raised him, his mother and I have raised him thus far. But there's not a day that goes by. Like right after this last case, I, and I remember when I was 15 or 16, my father gave me the autobiography of Malcolm X. So he has a week off this week. So that's what he's going to be reading this week. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, I think it's, it's important that we educate not only ourselves, but educate the generation behind us and like you said, being actors who give back and volunteer, and, and if you don't have children, you know, like going to a local school or going to a youth program that has young people who are interested in either the arts performance or just going to read books. I feel like even if you decide to volunteer at an elementary school and reading books to kids, not mm -hmm. only are you volunteering and giving back, but you're still practicing, you know, like reading out loud and performing to young people. There's a way of that duality to exist in your life, and it feeds your actor, but it feeds your soul, you know. It just absolutely. I mean, that's that's one of the beauties of, of of being, especially being a firefighter in New York. A lot of people don't know that out of ten thousand firefighters in New York, less than five percent are African American. So it's almost yeah. there's about two hundred firefighters out of ten thousand that are African-American. So I'm the only guy, I'm, I, I was the only black person in my firehouse for about 12 years. And I remember being on the fire truck, people would look at me and be like, you're a firefighter? I didn't know they had black firefighters. So just doing that job alone, it, it feels like I have a duty to do that and be on that truck and be visible so that they know that that's an option. That's a career path that they can take. Because usually when you don't see people like you in certain positions, you think, okay, I can't do that. So I, I get a lot of joy out of just doing that and being visible and serving the community. And, and I'm always going to high schools and talking to kids and giving them applications and telling them how easy, to, you know, how easy my schedule is, my other career, what I'm allowed to do because of that. And usually when I do that, they then... Uh, interest is sparked and then they take the test or they pursue it but I think as as artists um, we have a duty to to, to do that to uh, to you know part of the job of, of, of being an artist is doing some type of social change you're, you're influencing people 
They're telling stories. They're changing people's lives. And I think that you can't just stand by and watch something happen and not speak on it. And even if, you know, there's a lot of people who don't want to speak publicly because of their status or because of fear of losing money or whatever it is, then go produce a film that speaks about it. Go support somebody else that's speaking about it. You know what I mean? There's so many different ways that you can um, be about change without being on the soapbox or without being the face of it. There's a million different things you can do. Um, charities, I mean, plays, you can write. There's a ton of different things you can do, and I think it's it's our duty, whether you're a celebrity or not, I think as an artist, it's your duty. No matter what level you're on. That's yes. awesome. Yes. yes. I want to also congratulate you because you had a film in Sundance this yes. past January. Yes. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, The Bravest, The Boldest, it's about uh, two Army casualty officers, and they arrive at the Harlem Projects to deliver some news to a grief-stricken mother about her son serving in the war overseas. So yeah, definitely uh, another project that definitely hits home for you. Um, you know, Moon Olsen, who's the director for that, I mean, he's, he's if you look up his previous projects, he had another film called uh, Crazy Beat Strong Every Time that also went to Sundance that I was a part of. But his every time I read his scripts, they punch me right in the chest. They're so emotional, so heartfelt. And when I read this script, as soon as I read it, I was like, I, I really want to be a part of this. And, you know, being in the Marines, um, like, you know, once you, once you, it's something that I carry around with me for the rest of my life. And no matter if I'm active or not, you know, just hearing the stories about people overseas and, and dying or losing limbs and, or post-traumatic stress, whatever it is, it still affects me as if I'm over there right now. So getting the chance to do that film and, and, and talk about and putting a spotlight on people who serve and, and just the struggles they have to deal with on a daily basis, whether it's informing a parent that they've lost their son or whether it's serving or, or, or losing a limb, um, being a part of any project that's, that shows light on that is something that I have to do when, when I get the chance. Because um, there's hundreds of stories to be told about that, that that we don't know. And just like that film, The Bravest of Boldest, no one knows what it's like to go to a, a parent and say, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, but, you know, and to do that over and over, and that's your job. Every yeah. day, go out and give bad news. What does that do to a person? What does that do to your spirit? So um, that was a heavy piece. I mean, I remember the first screening I saw in Sundance, I lost it. I was sitting there, and it just hit me, and it was like, whoosh, it all came out because it, it, it touches me still to this day. Wow. Yeah, I mean... I, I can't wait till it's available for us. I mean, I wasn't able to go to Sundance, but when I saw it, I mean, going to school in Virginia, you know, Virginia has one of the largest naval bases in the country, and I was able to meet so many young men who serve, and then friends who even after they graduated college, nowadays we're coming out of school and we can't get jobs. So joining the armed forces seems to be the best thing. You know, with a degree, you automatically become an officer. So I have so yeah. many friends who are serving right now. I, I have a friend in Afghanistan as we speak. So it's one of those things where I definitely believe that they're very important stories and, and they touch the lives of so many people, not just those who serve, but folks who have family and friends who are, are away all the time and mothers who have to raise their children because their husbands are away. So those are all incredible stories. So I can't wait to for the film to come out uh, either via Netflix or we can check it out or it comes to LA or New York. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah. So what's next for you? Like you have Blacklist, you have this film in Sundance. I mean, um, do you have anything that you really want to work on? Any like secret passions that you want to get out? Do you want to write something? What's going on for you? But I mean, there's a couple of things. One, there's a, I did a project for BT, um, 
where I play the captain of this undercover unit, and it stars Lorenz Tate, Aisha Hines, written by, uh, directed by Reggie Bikewood, who did Biker Boys and New York Undercover. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that coming out, hopefully, uh, 2014 or 2015. That'll be exciting. That'll be truly exciting. And I'm also actually getting ready to start shooting another film, um, which also is very touching. I don't know how much to give away about it, but it's um, it's about life and death and, and knowing when you're going to go and, and getting ready for it. So I'm excited about that. I start shooting that in two weeks. Um, and then I'm very interested in writing. You know, there's so many stories I have to tell about the Marines, corrections, the fire department, uh, responding to 9-11. Um, there's tons of things inside me that I've, I've, I've started putting down on paper. And um, those are stories that have to be told um, and will be told. So those are a couple of things that um, I'll be working on for the next uh, few years. Well, I'm excited. Uh, well, you know, when you do write the script and those <laughs> things are percolating and those things happen, make sure to come back on Sally's Hangout. Tell Absolutely. us about it. Uh, you're Absolutely. always welcome on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and tell them, um, stay in touch with you, how they can follow your career. I know you have a, a great website that has, like, links to some of your stuff. They can follow you on your Twitter. Like, let folks know how they can. Yeah, well, your my, my, my website, www.hishamtaufik.com. I have three of uh, three films that I did. You know, I have uh, Say Grace Before Drowning, uh, which I was actually uh, one of the contestants in the uh, ABFF uh, HBO Short Film Fest competition. Um, I have another film, Counterfeit, which also won Best Mention at a. Uh, Urban World two years ago, um, and then I have uh, one other film up there. Um, can't remember the name right now, but you can watch all three of those films on my website if you go to my reel. Um, there'll be links for those films, and then you can follow me on Twitter at Hisham Taufik. I'm always tweeting. You know, we have a blacklist tweet party every Monday night, so you can jump in on that. Um, I have a fan uh, a fan book page tweeting on tonight. Oh, wait. No, there's no show. To, uh, uh, next Monday is the uh, Black yeah. start, February 24th. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll start up again. You know, I have, a, I have a Facebook fan page. Please, please, please like that because we know how important that is. Um, you can look me up on uh, Facebook and find my fan page and like that. And by liking it, you also uh, get updates on what's going on with me with you pictures and things like that in my career. So those are three ways you can keep in touch with me and um, you'll, you'll definitely hear about some new stuff coming down the pipe. Hashim, I just want to thank you for serving our country, for coming on the show, for being such an awesome human being and a great actor. Uh, it's always a blessing. All the guests that come on my show, I just love you guys so much because, you know, it's all about building a community and, and building a place where we're able to, you know, just come together and talk about our journeys and hopefully continue to inspire other people to keep going. So I hope um, all those out there who support Sally's Hangout and watch the show have been inspired by Hashim the way I have. Uh, he's definitely an inspiration. And I want you guys to tell someone to tell someone about Sully's Hangout. So make sure you subscribe to the page, youtube.com backslash Sully Hangout. Tweet us. Let us know what you thought about the show. Uh, next week, we'll be having our Oscars panel. Uh, now that I'm in L.A., I'm super excited. We'll get to talk about the Oscars, which uh, air live on March 2nd. So next week being the last week of February, uh, we'll be able to talk about kind of our What's, what our predictions are, what do we think about the films that are nominated and all that jazz, so I'm excited to hang out with fellow colleagues and, and have that chat, but Hashim, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank you. Wonderful well, evening. I can't wait for Blacklist. No, I, say, I wanted to thank you, too, because what you're doing is very important, and, and I think as, as, as artists, uh, we definitely have to 
you learn so much more by learning about other people's stories. Like when I watched the segment on Orange is the New Black, and I watched everybody's story, and they had a different path, uh, different road, and just how it was revealed to them, becoming series regular, or reading autobiographies. Um, what you're doing is great because I, you know, I'm always on YouTube watching every actor's audition, their story, what was their journey, because there's some similarities in there. And, and we get to learn that we're not on this island alone. There's tons of people out there that are doing the same things. Everybody's journey is different, but we all, we all have obstacles, adversities, and challenges. And when you watch things like, uh, you know, Sally's Hangout, we see these other journeys, these other actors, and it inspires us you know, to keep going. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so, so much. That means so much to me. <laughs> yes, my first hangout in L.A. <laughs> I've arrived, people. I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'll be here same time, same place next Monday. Uh, for now, the time difference, I'm going to make it work. Uh, and, that it might shift once I start booking a job, but again, Sally's Hangout will always be a priority. I'll always make it work. I'll always be able to do this show because, you know, like you said, it is important to create this platform. So I'm glad to, to be doing it and that God's blessed me with this idea to make it happen every week. So um, I just want to thank all of you guys, too, who support it, who watch it, who like it, who love it, who tweet us, who send me emails that keeps me going and inspired to keep the show going. So... It's been a blessing. I'm so grateful. <laughs> um, so I'll see you guys next week. It's been awesome. Thanks for hanging out with Hashim and I. We'll see you next time. Bye.